Hi friends, welcome back. Mrs. Gragney here, and today in our lesson, we're going to be finding factor pairs for numbers to 100. And we'll also be learning about two new types of numbers. Let's get started. Let's start with something we already know. Look at these two arrays. What multiplication sentence matches this array? One times eight equals eight. Great. And what multiplication sentence matches this array? Two times four equals eight. So both of these arrays show a product of eight and one, eight, two, and four are factors of eight. Here are two new arrays. Take a moment to analyze them. What product is represented by both arrays? 18 is the product. Pause the video here, draw both of these arrays, and write the multiplication sentence to match for each one. Hopefully you wrote one times 18 equals 18, and two times nine equals 18. Now what are the factors in the multiplication sentences we wrote? Circle them. The factors are one, 18, two, and nine. Pause the video now and write these factors of 18 that we just found in order from least to greatest. So far for the factors of 18, we have one, two, nine, and 18. Pause the video now and draw another array with a product of 18 that represents two different factors than we found so far and write a multiplication sentence that matches. Then come back and we'll compare. Did you draw an array that represents three times six equals 18 or six times three equals 18? What new factors of 18 did we find? Now we can see that three and six are also factors of 18. So let's add them to our list of factors of 18. Now we still want our factors to be in order from least to greatest. So we'll need to move nine and 18. So we have one, two, we'll add three, six, and add nine and 18. So now for our factors of 18, we have one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. But how can we be sure that we found all of the factors of 18? What if there are more factors of 18? Pause the video to talk out your thinking. Maybe you're thinking that you could just think through all of your multiplication facts or use a multiplication chart to help you. Or maybe you're thinking you could try to draw more arrays. We already have an array drawn with two as a factor and another drawn with three as a factor. So we could try to draw an array with four as a factor and five as a factor all the way up to 18. But if the number were really large, like 92 instead of 18, then that would take us a really long time to try to draw all those arrays. So let's try this. Look at our list of factors of 18. We can draw an arrow from one to 18 because one and 18 is a factor pair because one times 18 equals 18. We can multiply them together to get 18. Think about what you know about pairs. When we talk about a pair of shoes, we're talking about two shoes, right? It's the same with factor pairs. When we talk about a factor pair, we're talking about two factors that when we multiply them together, we get a certain product. Pause the video now and draw more arrows to connect the other factor pairs of 18. So what are the factor pairs of 18 that we have? One and 18, two and nine, three and six. So how can we use this to help us decide if we found all the factors of 18? Well, take a look at that middle factor pair, three and six. We've checked all of the factors up to three, one, two, and three. And the only counting numbers between three and six are four and five. So think, is four or five a factor of 18? No, neither four or five is a factor of 18. So that means we found all the factors of 18. Now it's time for you to try one. 
Pause the video and find all of the factors of eight and list them in order from least to greatest and explain out loud how do you know you found all the factors of eight. Then come back and we'll discuss. Does your work look like mine? To explain how we knew we found all the factors of eight, maybe you were thinking we could connect the factor pairs, one and eight, two and four. If we look at that middle factor pair, two and four, well, we found all the factors up to two and the only counting number between two and four is three. Since three is not a factor of eight, we know we found all the factors of eight. Nice work. Let's try another one. Read the equation. Two times eight equals 16. What's the product? The product is 16. And what are the factors? The factors are two and eight. Pause the video now and think about what other multiplication sentences we could write with different factors that would give us the same product and record the multiplication sentences you come up with. Did you think of one times 16 equals 16 and four times four equals 16? What are the factors in these multiplication sentences? The factors are one, 16, four, and four. So let's list the factors of 16 in order from least to greatest. Pause the video to do that now. So our factors of 16 are one, two, four, eight, and 16. Now, should we have written four twice? Because it is four times four. No, we didn't have to write four twice. When a number is multiplied by itself to get a product, we still only record that number once when we're listing the factors. Now, are we sure we got all the factors of 16? Pause the video to explain your reasoning. Maybe you were thinking we could draw arrows to connect the factor pairs like this. We can see we have one and 16 as a factor pair, two and eight is a factor pair, and four and four is a factor pair of 16. Between two and four is the counting number three. Three is not a factor of 16. Between four and eight, we have five, six, and seven, none of which are factors of 16. When we get to eight, we notice we already have its factor pair, two. And since eight is halfway to 16, we don't have to go any further or check any more numbers to see if they're factors of 16. We know we found them all. Great job. Let's try another one. Read the equation. One times seven equals seven. What's the product? Seven is the product. And what are the factors? One and seven are the factors. Pause the video and see if you can find another factor pair with a product of seven. So what did you find? Were you actually able to find another factor pair that gives us a product of seven? Let's think about the factors of seven. If we list the factors we have so far, one and seven, and we think about the numbers in between one and seven, two, three, four, five, and six, None of those numbers are factors of seven. One and seven are the only factors of seven. How is that different from the factors of eight, 16, and 18 that we found earlier in the lesson? Eight, 16, and 18 all had more factors than seven does. Seven only has one factor pair, one and seven, and the other numbers had more than that. Let's think about another number. Think about the number five. What's a factor pair that would give us a product of five? We know one times five equals five, so we can list the factor pair one and five. Are there any other factor pairs that would give us a product of five? Think about the numbers between one and five, two, three, and four. None of those are factors of five. So one and five are the only factors of five. Numbers like five and seven that have one factor pair or exactly two factors, one and itself, are called prime numbers. Everyone say prime numbers. 
pause the video now and see if you can discover at least two other numbers that are prime numbers. Remember, a prime number is a number that has only one and itself as factors. Here are the prime numbers I came up with, 11, 13, and 17. Though these aren't the only prime numbers, there are more. Did you come up with others? Now, if these are prime numbers, can you name some numbers that are not prime? Maybe you said six is not a prime number, or eight, or nine, or 12. All of these numbers that we just listed have more than two factors. They have at least one other factor besides one and the number itself. These numbers are called composite numbers. Everyone say composite numbers. Let's take six as an example. Does six have more than two factors? Well, we know that we can multiply one times six to get six, but we can also multiply two times three to get six. So that means two and three are also factors of six. So what does that mean for the number six? It's a composite number. Let's try another one. But this time we're going to use a table to record the factor pairs. So pause the video, draw a table like mine, and then come back and we'll find the factor pairs for 35. Now at any time, as we're finding the factor pairs for 35, if you need to, feel free to pause the video and use a strategy such as skip counting or drawing an array to help you. So what would be the first factor pair for 35? One and 35. Because one times 35 equals 35. Let's move to the next number, two, and try two. Is anything times two equal to 35? Nope, nothing times two equals 35. So two is not a factor of 35. Let's try three. Is anything times three equal to 35? Nope, nothing times three equals 35. Let's go to four. Is anything times four equal to 35? Nope, nothing times four equals 35. Let's try five. Is anything times five equal to 35? Yes, five times seven equals 35. So five and seven is our next factor pair. Now, the only counting number between five and seven is six. So let's try six. Is anything times six equal to 35? Nope, nothing times six equals 35. So six is not a factor of 35. Now, should we continue on and test to see if eight is a factor of 35? Pause the video to explain what you're thinking. No, we don't have to test to see if eight is a factor of 35. We've already tested all of the numbers up to seven, and we found that five times seven is a factor pair for 35, which means that there won't be any more factors of 35 that are greater than seven. So looking at the factor pairs for 35, is 35 a prime number or a composite number? And how do you know? Pause the video to explain your thinking. Hopefully you said 35 is a composite number. And we know this because it has more than one factor pair. It has more factors besides just one and itself. Pause the video now and use a table like we just did to list the factor pairs for 23 and 48 and tell whether each number is prime or composite and how you know. Then come back and we'll discuss. Welcome back. Does your work look like mine? How did you know 23 was a prime number? 23 is a prime number because its only factors are one and itself. What about 48? How did you know 48 was a composite number? 48 is a composite number because it has lots of factors, more than just one and itself. In fact, we found 10 factors for 48. Great job. Excellent work today, friends. I think we're ready for the problem set. On the screen are the must-do problems for the problem set. Work on these problems for 10 minutes, and if you finish early, feel free to try any of the other problems on the problem set. 
Today, we found factor pairs for numbers to 100, and we learned about prime and composite numbers. Be sure to check in with your teacher, and I'll see you next time for another Eureka Math lesson.